From the far left all the way to here, we have our trainer, Gene Gieselman, Mike Jorgensen, Vince Coleman, Willie McGee, Ozzie Smith, and Whitey Herzog with us in panel number two. And again, I'm taking you back to 1985 a little bit, and I mentioned the Cardinals won 101 games that season. We won the National League East Division, if you may remember, uh, by three games against the dreaded New York Mets, who we used to call what? Oh, you do remember. I like it. I'm just glad you said that instead of me. I like that. But uh, these guys, obviously, uh, the main uh, core of, of what we did that year in 1985, and it was such a magical year. There is pressure. Uh, you always want to give the manager and the general manager and the players uh, a full deck to play with because, you know, you don't want to be shorthanded going into a series, and uh, that's very important to win. But these guys were, they're great. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we've lost a few of our players uh, for she and some of the ones, but uh, it is something to be said for the city of St. Louis. You people are the greatest fans. Uh, I was there for 29 years, and there's nobody better than the St. Louis fans. Gino, I'm so glad you, you brought up the, the players that we've lost, and in, in not only Bob Forsh, but, but Daryl Porter from that team in 1985, who were you know, such integral parts, dear friends for life, really, for us. And uh, There were 37 players who were fortunate enough to uh, be on that team in 1985, and we have about a third of them here tonight, so I think that means something as well. And, uh, you know, it was a, a magical, magical time. The heat is on. You all remember that song was being played every day. Everybody wearing uh, Cardinal Red. One of our veteran players uh, that year uh, was one of three players, three of those 37 players, uh, who be eventually became a big league manager. I, I knew it was my last year. I was hitting about 180 going into August, and Whitey wasn't using me too much. Didn't look too good. I was throwing a lot of batting practice, you know. So... <laughs> Uh, that was coming, but uh, I learned a lot, of course, from him and uh, uh, some of the guys. And, you know, when you look back at our club in 85, we had the Rookie of the Year. We got the MVP. We had two 20-game winners. We had, I don't know how many Gold Glovers. Somebody could tell me, at least four or five a couple. Yeah, yeah, there they are. So, uh, I mean, how can you not win 101 games? You know what? Uh, it was a fantastic season. It was, a, it was the most fun I ever had as a player. It was last year I got to play. And uh, to be back with the guys now is great. Vince Coleman, what did Dal Maxfield tell you when uh, he called you in uh, to his office when you first came to the big league? I went to spring training, didn't make the club, went down to AAA. As you know, Willie got hurt, and I thank him every day for that. <laughs> <laughs> So and, uh, by April 12th, I got a phone call to come to the big leagues. And as soon as I walked in the door, first thing that Whitey, well, I wouldn't say Whitey, it was Dale Maxwell. He said, you're only going to be here for four days. And I'm like, wow, four days? I said, well, I'm not going back. No, no, no. <laughs> he said, well, I, lo I, love you. I love your confidence. I love the way you think, you know, but, you know, you, you look green in your area. You know, Willie's a little Andrew. There's no way for you to play. You have Lonnie Smith. You had... At, 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 at Willie, you had Tito, you had Andy Van Schleich, you had Dave, you know, so you, the list goes on and on of the great outfielders they had. So <clears throat> I say, I'm not going back. So he put me in the lineup. The first night I go four for four, steal four bases, scored four runs, and had four RBIs. And I hit a game winning triple against John Candelari. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the first 44 games, I had 41 stolen bases, and Whitey hit the lottery, you know, Whitey. Whitey would, always, Whitey would always tell jokes, you know. He, he, you know, one joke he would tell, you know, you know what Adam told E on their first sexual encounter? Stand back, girl. You know how big this thing gonna get, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what he was saying about me, you know. He, he, you don't know how, what you have right now, bitch. <laughs> It was a rainy day, and I'm standing on the field, and the tarp come running out. At that time, the tarpaulin came out of the first base line. And, and if hadn't, I'm standing, my back is to it, as well as Terry Pendleton, and uh, it rolled up my leg and knocked me down. And at that time, when they say that, you know, when you're in fear of your life, you don't feel pain, that is so true. This tarpaulin was wearing like a ton. And so I'm laying there where this is up to my hip. And all my teammates are there, and Ken Daly can testify. They was trying to have a bat to stop it, to lift it up, and they could not budge it. 
So now they had to re-roll it back off, and that's when I fell everything. So we got back in the locker room, and, 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 and Gino was putting his hands on me, trying to work it out, you know. But it was just a little sore. So Whitey came in, and he said, can you go? And I think I hopped, I know I j jumped off the table, but I just couldn't put any pressure on it to get a jump, to get a lead, you know, to run. Um, he put Tito Landon in the lineup, and Tito went five for five that night. And so that was a great relief. So, um, but then we went on and, and, and beat the Dodgers, and then we was headed to the World Series. So then it was still sore. It was just sore to run, and I just couldn't put any pressure on it. And then we decided to take an MRI. Uh, then we found out it was a cracked tibia in my left, uh, behind my left leg. So therefore, I was knocked out of the World Series. And not only that, I mean, the, what cost us the World Series, I think, more so than anything, was Dengature. You know, Dengature with the bad guy. But this, this next guy uh, was, the, uh, was the center fielder, uh, and, uh, and he just loves to talk. So I'm going to give him as much time. <laughs> As, uh, as, he, as he wants. It was, just, it was one of them years where, you know, I, you play baseball all your life and you work, and all the years you prepare, each big league season, you prepare yourself for that season, and all of a sudden it just all came together. You know, every, every aspect of the game became easy, if you know what I'm saying. I didn't have to think. It was just go out there, get your work in, and it just happened. I mean, and then you have guys like, you know, we had a lineup where you have a guy like Vince Coleman who let, let off, and my job, I would take pitches to let him steal, and he would, <laughs> I would take a strike and let him steal as many bases as he could. And <laughs> so <laughs> he's laughing. Now, and then my job was to get him in or get him over. Then the next, the next hitter who was a third place hitter, he had a job. The next hitter had a job. The next, and that was the way the lineup worked. So there was one situation where Vince, <laughs> you know, I told him, I asked him, look, when, when you're on second and there's two strikes on me, please, just don't run. <laughs> you already know what happened. <laughs> so that day, we go out there and there's two strikes. And I'm hitting left hand and all of a sudden I just see a cloud just shoot. <laughs> and and the guy throws me a curveball so I lose focus and boom, strike three. So I say, okay, I come in. So I said, I'll stop this. So the next two days, I start swinging at the first or second pitch. <laughs> no, no, for two days, Willie didn't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> because, because sometimes you don't have to talk. <laughs> there, there's other ways to get your point over, you know. But uh, all in all, he came to me and we worked it out. And, you know, he, like we all had situations where we had to grow in the game. Oz, we've talked about this before, but, the, but that, that moment where you hit that home run off of Tom Needenfuhr, uh, first home run you'd hit left-handed in your career or just that year? Was that in your career? 3,000 at bat, says Whitey. <laughs> Ozzy didn't really want to remember that part, but, but he hits a home run left handed off of Tom Needenfuhr. And we, as Cardinal fans, or you all who are listening to that game, hear Jack Buck say, Go crazy. And you hear that call. Now, Ozzy, you lived that moment. You didn't hear Jack until later, but that's been kind of tied to history. And, and you recognize, I'm sure, just how important that is to Cardinal fans. Well, all of us, uh, you know, sometimes we don't know when that moment's going to come. And Certainly that day when I got up, I had no idea that the day would end the way that it did. Uh, I certainly, at, at, in that instance, was not trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark. But in 1985, things had come together for me, both offensively, and uh, I had a better understanding of what type of hitter I was going to be. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when I first came over here, Whitey gave me some people to work with, uh, to work with me from a fundamental standpoint at learning how to stay on top of the ball and keeping the ball out of the air. And uh, 1985, uh, all of those things came together. Um, I'd learned how to pull the ball. I'd met a guy by the name of Mackie Shillstone, uh, I trained with, uh, who took Michael Spinks from a light heavy to a heavy weight. Mm -hmm. uh, went down and uh, I always knew that I had to continue to work hard if I was going to remain at the big league level. Ozzie uh, called him the architect of that team and he was that and so much more. Whitey Herzog. The Godfather. The, is, the, doesn't he look like the Godfather? <laughs> so we made three deals here that kind of put the final pieces that really made us a good ball club. 
Uh, going to spring printing, uh, the paper said I was the first manager going to be fired. And uh, we, no, we were going to finish last. That's what the press was saying. Uh, we only had one guy on the ball club that had a save up to that time, I think. Uh, and that was Neil Allen. And uh, going to, uh, coming out of spring printing, he, uh, that we got the Hernandez deal. And coming out of spring printing, uh, he was the closer. Uh, opening day, uh, Gary Carter hit a home run off in the ninth inning. We lose. Uh, the next day, he wild pitched uh, against a ball against the screen, and we lose. I uh, come home for our first home stand, the 15th inning. He balks in the winning run. <laughs> we lose. <laughs> and things aren't going so damn good. We're one. <laughs> Uh, we're one and six, uh, and finally we got to 500, and we struggled again, and uh, really struggled to get to 20 and 20, you know, and uh, all of a sudden, Tito uh, fell out of bed or something. I don't know what the hell happened to him, but <laughs> he, co he come to the uh, ballpark one day with a bad back, and he was hurting, you know, so we had to put him on the disabled list, and I had had Vince in spring training, and then uh, I... He didn't have a very good spring. The forest guys gave him a little trouble, and uh, I didn't think he was quite ready yet, but I said, well, I'm going to bring him up. And at that time, uh, when we put Tito on the 14-day disabled list, we brought Vince up. I don't know if that's true, what Max, he said, because I wasn't there, but I said, Vince, uh, Vince I'm probably going to use you a lot as a pitch runner in the next 10, 12 days, and when Tito's ready, I'll send you back. And I remember Vince saying, you just give me a chance, he said, you'll never send me back. And I, I really didn't believe that. I said, that's what I'd like for him to say, because he was a cocky kid and everything. But <laughs> Was? <laughs> but the, thing, but was? the thing is, uh, we're playing Pittsburgh about the first two days he got there. And the ninth inning, a tie ball game, two runners on. I think we were one run down. I put Vince uh, in the pinch hit. I didn't have anybody left. And uh, he triples, he triples down the right field line, and we win that game. And uh, the next thing you know, I start playing him a little bit. Lonnie wasn't really tearing it up in left field. And Vince got in the lineup, and uh, we, we took off. But it was a fun year. Didn't end so good. I had a fundraiser last night at St. Louis University. Mr. Dankinger was there. I asked him, I asked him if he still had his... Uh, uh, Braille watch that we presented him when he came for the 20th anniversary. <laughs> and then somebody from the crowd asked me what I thought about instant replay, and I said, 30 years too late. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to leave it at that. You talk to the players. Okay.